and welcome to Frank's School. I hope this is back in a little better focus than I have been. Well, we're coming to the very end of the fourth year. I only have tomorrow, one more day after today because I go to 180 days. And also the end of this Water Love series. Here's my eight, eighth day that I'm devoting to it. Uh, fountains and, and mills. Well, uh, before I get into that, you know, it's this is the time of year in real time here on the farm or Frank School, that we wait, I wait for the water to come back out of the mountain. There's an annual cycle here. In the springtime, there's lots of water, the spring runoff, uh, and then in the summer it goes dry, and then uh, gradually in the fall, the water will start to come out of the mountain again, and it builds up. Uh, and at the moment, there's very little water running, uh, but uh, there's some... Uh, Water meadowing, you know, uh, I, I'm thinking a little bit about revisiting that. I, I sort of gave up on it and turned my attention more to drainage here. I found that drainage was a really bigger issue a lot of the time than, than the irrigation. But I may go back to completely covering uh, some areas with water. Uh, there's a place that I'd like to start a garden, a, a very big garden. And, and I, with my perfect contoured ditches, I, I can flood it. Uh, and since the sod is so thick, and I, I, I just may experiment with that again. I wrote down uh, Madeira because the island of Madeira uh, belongs to Portugal, and that's a, another place. Uh, it's not so easy to get to for Americans. You have to fly first to Portugal or Europe and then to Madeira. But there you can see <coughs> the Levadas uh, there too. I've never been there. All right, fountains. Well, I love fountains, <laughs> but fossil fuels are there, and they, and they trouble me. I mean, people do love fountains. Uh, you can buy plastic or rubber pools and pumps and make what's called a water feature uh, for people's gardens. <clears throat> you know, I see them all the time, but when I, I look at them and I see that water bubbling up in a pretty fountain in so many ways, I, I'm troubled because I know perfectly well that at least here, that that's being powered by electricity, coal, oil, whatever, fossil fuels. There's a pump, there's a motor blowing uh, the water into the air. Now, of course, it's pretty, but I, I'm troubled by that. You know, in a way, to me, they're not real fountains. Uh, uh, Geneva's Jacques d'eau uh, is famous. I mean, it's of almost 500 feet high that it shoots water, and it's spectacular. I've stood under it. Uh, but it's a case in point. I was just looking up, I think it has two 500 kilowatt motors running two, uh, two pumps to blast that water up there. I, I looked it up because I thought, you know, Mont Blanc is visible in a distance. And I thought, do you suppose there's a pent stock that, that maintains that pressure? Uh, fountains, to spray water, you, you have to contain the water in some kind of a pent stock a pipe or something, some way of containing it to make it to, to spray up instead of just falling. Uh, uh, but, you know, so that, I, I, it's okay. I mean, it's, it's spectacular in its own way, but no, not really for me. But Tivoli in Italy, now if you would look at that, uh, uh, Tivoli Gardens in Denmark is a famous amusement park. That's not what I'm talking about. Tivoli Garden in Italy, in the Italian town of Tivoli. Villa d'Este is, uh, is the name of the villa. And if you would go on, uh, just whatever, on Google it and, and look at images, there you will see, oh, uh, my wife Jane and I went there. Uh, it, it was one of the destinations I really wanted to see on, on a, uh, you know, we made it a point to go there. And, you know, so often there's nobody else there when when I when we go to these places because they're not they're not now so well featured. But anyway, uh, if you look at the images, I think you can get an idea of how much the Italian gardens at that time loved fountains. And those are not those are not being pushed with uh, electric pumps. Uh, they they come from a, a river that's been diverted and. Unbelievable. There's an avenue of a hundred fountains, I think, where you can walk along a, a little, I hate to call it an avenue, it's, but there's a hundred fountains all falling uh, to, uh, to your right. If you, if, uh, 
wonderful. I, I bought a fairly expensive videotape uh, of it, which I have, um, but I'm sure, I, I'm sure that on YouTube there'd be lots of ways to being able to see that. Falling Water in Portugal and Galicia, Spirit, Work, and Joy. That was the way I build my uh, trip to, uh, to Europe in uh, 2013. And I had tried to get others to go along. Uh, you know, I, it was, I already realized that Portugal was, the part of Portugal, northern Portugal, was blessed with ample water and that they had a history of enjoying it and working with it. And I wanted to go see it. Uh, and uh, it was a very wonderful trip. As it ended up turning out, I, t I tried probably 20 people. I tried to get them to come with me on this trip. And as it finally turned out, the only one who went with me was, was Shirley. Uh, and, and, and we filmed this uh, uh, in, in detail. Um, and, uh, you know, if you wanted to go back through uh, Frank's school, you, you could find this. But um, I would recommend, instead of that, go to, or at least first, go to playlists on my uh, channel. And uh, they, now they, I can put them in alphabetical order. You might have to, you might, not, I don't know if you can do that. 57 water-powered grist mills at Picon and Falon. That, I think, would be worth your looking at. Uh, uh, I can't say too much more about it. Another uh, playlist is the ruins of a mill in Galicia. Uh, a friend of mine named Chausset has a ruined mill. And Shirley and I went and measured it. I, I still haven't given up the idea of putting a team together to go and restore that mill. It's really wonderful. And then Gifhorn, now that's not 2013, that was 2014. Uh, and this time I was traveling with Shirley and Thomas. And Gifhorn is a, is a playlist. And that brings up the matter of wind. Uh, you know, it was... Uh, this this is about water love. Wind love, uh, you know, I think wind's a little harder to love. But uh, but I don't know. You know, I may, uh, I may we'll see. And, and wh why I come to that is because of this idea of mills. All right, uh, water-powered mills. Let me just show you. Uh, there's a little book about it. Uh, Discovering Water Mills. I think you can probably read that. Here's a book given to me by Shirley. Handwerk, Handwerk am Bach. Von Mühlen, Segen, Schmieden. Uh, this is, uh, that translates uh, handwork uh, uh, at the, at the uh, uh, river. Here's a, there, there's a, a uh, up and down sawmill. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, she, and uh, Schmieden, uh, Sege is uh, saws. Uh, Mühlen, Mills, say, uh, Saws, and, and, and Smiths, uh, Schmieden, uh, blacksmith shops. Uh, really neat book. Uh, I'm not going to go. Uh, another book that Shirley had given me, uh, Alte Mühlen, Old Mills. Uh, just beautiful. You see, I, in, in, in Europe, especially, I, I would say, in, oh, look at that. Uh, oh, oh, a millstone with a tree growing around it. Um, in Germany, uh, there is a, oh, and this one, the guy's actually building a water, uh, a, a uh, let's see. that might be a, that's probably a gear he's, he's building. It might be a, a, a water. Work. Germany uh, has a love of, of this, which is more, I think they've clung to it uh, longer. Well, you know, in a way, you could also say that the, the, this stuff, well, we had it in the United States, but anyway, I'm, I'm being quick here with this. So those are water-powered mills, and then uh, uh, windmills. I'm actually thinking about making some small ones. Gifhorn is the, uh, oh, the Thomases and I had a, had a beer and some bread right at that. Gifhorn has got something like, oh, I don't know, I should be able to tell you right now, it's got a collection of about 30, 20 or 30 mills uh, from, brought there from all over the country, life-size, <laughs> I mean the real mill, uh, but uh, 
but also models. And and again, I say if you would uh, if you would go to that playlist, there you would uh, see it. That's a Portugal. Maybe I just showed you. That's a Portugal style mill. If I ever build a, a, a windmill, I'll do that kind with cloth sails. Um, <clears throat> Thomas uh, had found this for me. Mills uh, and the Millers in Berlin. Uh, really nice book. Uh, and uh, he had seen it and realized, aha, that's for Frank. Uh, oh, it's it's very detailed. Uh, uh, but uh, I don't know if it it would. Uh, and and so much of it is is words. I don't I don't know if I can show it to you all that. All that well. I don't love at this point. I certainly don't love windmills uh, like I do uh, water <laughs> water powered mills. But and then maybe finally uh, this book I had bought uh, at uh, at Gifhorn. Uh, small mill art. The art of the art of making small mills. I guess you would say. Uh, and this uh, this. I mean, equipped with this, I, I'm I'm quite sure that I could build a uh, a water uh, a windmill or a water powered mill too. This is this is not only windmills. This also has uh, has water mills. Well, I have to stop somewhere, and so uh, uh, this is uh, I think this is this was also a good one. Oh yeah, that shows a oh, really a wonderful place. But uh, as I say, I, I really do have to stop someplace. And so I guess that'll be it. Um, tomorrow will be the last day of the fourth year, and uh, I'm going to look back at the year. Bye for now.